I've been using the razor blade stealth for the past month and it has been one of the most pleasant experiences I've ever had on a Windows laptop. And that's saying a lot. I want to start off by saying that this 12 and a half inch laptop is one of the best, if not the best laptops a person can buy, especially when you consider the price. The build quality is some of the best on the market. Pair that with some decent hardware specifications, then you have a winner. This sounds crazy, especially for a Mac OS fanboy like myself, but I found myself choosing the Razer over my 15 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar to do much of my daily tasks like email and work related tasks like PowerPoint revisions, Excel data entry, and Word document editing. I also want to say that I have nothing but good things to say about the Razer Blade Stealth. And if you want a short and sweet version of this review, and you're on the fence about this laptop and purchasing it, don't be. Buy this thing right now, you will not regret it, I promise you. So with all that out of the way, I wanted to take a bit of a different approach with this review because I am absolutely in love with this laptop. I thought I would take the time to identify things that would be good for Razer to improve, making it the best laptop that you could buy. This laptop features Intel's sixth generation Skylake processors, uh, this specific machine that I have is a 2.5 gigahertz Intel Core i7 6500U dual core, eight gigabytes of 1866 megahertz RAM, integrated Intel HD graphics 520, and a 256 gigabyte PCIe M.2 SSD. On one side of the blade stealth, there is a Thunderbolt 3 port, a USB 3.0 port, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the other, there's another USB 3.0 port uh, and a full HDMI 1.4 port. Additionally, this laptop has 802.11 A through AC and Bluetooth 4.1. This little laptop has a 12.5 inch Agizio capacitive touchscreen capable display that has 3840 by 2160 resolution, all of which is powered by Windows 10. One thing that you're gonna wanna note if you're considering this machine is the actual formatted capacity of the drive, the hard drive on this machine. There's 226 gigabytes of formatted space and users can expect around 160 to 180 gigabytes of actual usable space. The Blade Stealth has a fantastic keyboard. You get a consistent feel with each key press and a very satisfying, responsive tactile feedback as you type. The keyboard is solid with no flexing at all in it. I will say that I wish Razer would have lighted the special characters on the number row and the function keys with multimedia actions, as it is impossible to see when you're in the dark if you have no light source. With Razer Synapse uh, application on it, you can customize the keyboard's functions and uh, the lighting pattern if you'd like. So that's a really neat addition that I, I really enjoyed. While we're on the topic of IO, the trackpad is fantastic and it does a pretty good job uh, at accuracy when I'm making fine adjustments in Adobe Photoshop and things like that. I will say palm rejection isn't the best as I found my cursor placement was moving my type marker from time to time while I was responding to emails or typing out notes. No big deal, but noticeable nonetheless. The Razer Synapse control over the trackpad is non-existent, so there wasn't much room for adjustment in that application as it was all done through Windows 10. The Blade Stealth is charged via the Thunderbolt 3 port, which was a fantastic choice and good job on you, Razer. The charger Razer gives you is built very well with a braided cable that looks like it will last quite some time. One issue I have with this is that the USB type C part of the cable is non-removable and I really wish it was. Because you charge your laptop in this fashion, and there's only one way to do it through the Thunderbolt 3 port, you could find yourself in quite a predicament, as I did when I was editing videos from my Glyph SSD. There were many times I found myself having to save and close my project to charge the laptop. At that point, I had to finish my edits on my Mac. This is easily solvable issue by Razer by just adding another Thunderbolt 3 port. Speaking of editing, you may be wondering if it is possible to do so on this machine. Well, with a fast external storage solution like that of the Glyph, a bit of care in setting up proxies at the beginning of your Adobe Premiere project, I'm here to tell you that you most definitely can edit 4K footage on this laptop. Without proxies, however, it is uh, an unbearable and an unpleasant experience as you will get some choppy playback and all types of stuff. 
and it's just a bad experience. So learn a little bit about proxies and you're off to the races by editing on this small compact system. The neat thing about Razer's laptops is the option to connect Razer's core, which is an external graphics card solution. But in my case, I use the Bison Box 3 and because it's running Windows 10, the Bison Box 3 ran flawlessly, allowing me to harness the power of a desktop grade GPU on the blade stealth when I needed it. So editing and all that type of stuff, when I, I could go and make some nice cuts to things on the go, come back, render and export using uh, my Bison Box 3 and it was a very, very pleasant and seamless solution and it worked really well. There's one hardware flaw with the blade stealth and that's the placement of the fan on the bottom of this laptop. Because of its placement, and where it is, it's blocked by 90% of my use cases. So when it was on my lap, I was blocking the fan and it was getting extremely hot. Uh, even when I was using it on a tabletop, it still wasn't getting enough airflow. So I ended up propping it up that they really need to have side ventilation. And if they had that, it would be a fantastic addition. It would probably run a lot cooler and be a much more pleasant user experience if I'm using this on my lap which 90% of the time I am because it's so small and portable. Moving on to the display, on the Blade Stealth, it is a beautiful and interactive experience. As it is fully touch enabled, the touch screen is extremely responsive and works very, very well. The problem I have with it isn't Razer's, it's Microsoft's management of scaling in Windows 10. Scaling on Windows 10 is a terrible experience and you're never going to be able to take full advantage of the 3840 by 2160 resolution on this laptop because it becomes unreadable and a lot of applications just don't scale correctly and it's, it's a very difficult experience. The sound reproduction on this little beauty is fantastic and the speakers pack quite a punch. The side placement of them makes a very enjoyable experience and I didn't experience any distortion while enjoying media or listening to music. Ultimately, I really enjoyed my time with the Razer Blade Stealth. I am now reconsidering my life choices in purchasing the MacBook Pro. The Blade Stealth is the best portable laptop on the market in my opinion. It is built really well and has the power under the hood to back that up. And at the time of this video, it comes in at under $1,400 USD, which is a way better value for money than that of what Apple is offering right now at that price. Big thanks to B&H Photo for sending this out as a loaner and allowing me to take a closer look at it. I'm sad to see it go back. Uh, if you're interested in seeing current pricing and availability, hit the link in the description of the video. Well, that about does it for me in this one. If you like this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If not, you know what to do. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I'm Tomas and I will catch you in the next one.